So welcome back from lunch. Everybody have a time to have some good food and get some fresh air? Well, great. We're on the home stretch. We've got a fantastic, fun afternoon plan. Yesterday morning, we started talking out, um, we started out talking about the human focus. And we talked about the importance of you and thinking about you. And then this morning, we talked about a bunch of cool technology stuff, and we shifted focus, and we came back, and now we're back to talking about you. So I want to show you something. These are two little plastic penny scent animals. Why are they relevant? Well, I work for Alcorn McBride, and we are a company of engineers. We work really, really hard. We create amazing products, and we always make time for fun. My director of engineering, our director of engineering, Jim, very, very simple. He takes time to make sure that throughout the workday, people laugh. And I was running around last week packing boxes, getting ready for the conference, and I didn't know it, but he threw these. He puts these all over our office. He threw these in one of my boxes. And I was unpacking the other day, and I open them up, and I see these things, and I laugh. And I said, Jim, no, he didn't explode my experience, but he gave me one. He gave me a very neat, personal experience. So during the day, every day, we're all out there trying to create amazing guest experiences for everyone else. And we wanted to take this opportunity to ask you, what are you doing to create your own amazing personal experience? Because how can you create amazing experiences for others when the one that you have for you is just me? So this afternoon, um, I was trying to think of a way, how can we give you an opportunity to energize as part of the state conference? And I thought of a friend of mine who's more disruptive and makes you more comfortable. Oh, makes you more uncomfortable. David Shoup. He is a friend of mine from many years ago. And I gave him a call, and I told him what we were doing, and I said, I want you to make everybody uh, think about themselves. And without further ado, I'm going to welcome David Shoup. <laughs> He's going to make you laugh. Thank you. Hi, guys. Let's do a quick exercise. Everybody stand up. You guys just have to sit down, right? Stand up for a second. Roll your shoulders. Right? Raise your hands high. Raise them low. Give me a little shake like this. All right. I didn't even need to use the head thing. I mind controlled you guys. It's great. Everybody look to your neighbor and say, you good looking thing, don't you ever die. All right. Sit on down. Woo! Nice. Guys, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that I'm here. When Lauren reached out to me, this is a couple months ago, uh, I, she's like, I'm looking for someone you know, who can uplift our group, and I'm, can you think of anybody? And I'm like, w me? Could I? Could I, could I be the one? And uh, she says, yes, great. So I'm really excited to be here, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Um, and, and the topic is really, is life is hilarious. It really it is. Life is super hilarious. There's just opportunities, really, for, for laughter really are everywhere. You just got to be willing and able. You just got to be willing to look for them. This is about you guys. You got to be willing to look for them. They're everywhere. Now, I'm from Seattle. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Where's David? Seattle. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, and every time I mention to people that I'm from Seattle, this is where humor is everywhere. Every time I mention I'm from Seattle, without fail, everybody's got to go, you're from Seattle? It rains a lot there, doesn't it? You get a lot of rain. You get a lot of moisture, a lot of, a lot of precipitation, a lot of dew, a lot of condensation. It's wet there in Seattle, isn't it? Right? And we know that. You don't have to tell us. It's not like we do that to you guys. You're from New York, huh? You must get a lot of stabbings. A lot of, a lot of stabbings, a lot of killings, right? Wisconsin, right? Oh, you must get a lot of cheese in Wisconsin, right? Florida, you must get a lot of retired people in Florida. Beep, bop, bo, right? No, we don't do that. Actually, I got so sick of that kind of response, so I used to kind of come up with a my own, like, retort, you know, with statistics. Well, actually, the annual rainfall 
in Houston is actually higher than the rainfall in Seattle. But people don't care. They're like, but it rains there a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, so I finally had to just say, yes, it does. It rains a lot. And uh, you know, you can tell a Seattle person, um, someone's from Seattle, that they don't have an umbrella. Right? We literally don't have umbrellas. We just, whatever. Um, so this has been a really great event. And um, I had to take a break yesterday. I watched a little bit of football. Anybody watch football? Yeah. Woo. Go, what? Yeah. Hey, good job. I, who was I talking about that I don't take heckles? But that was a heckle, man. It hurt my feelings. Um, no, but I, I love football. And one thing, there's actually one thing that I really can't stand when it comes to football is that those over-exaggerated like celebrators, right? They, they get a catch and they're like, woo! First down! Three yards! Yeah! And I'd like to see if you take that into the real world, right? You take that, you don't see lawyers doing this. Woo! My objection was sustained. <laughs> Suck it. <sighs> or you're, you know, you don't see doctors die. Who I diagnosed that correctly. Yeah, you've got chlamydia. <laughs> High five. Ooh, wash up first. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that, right? <laughs> oh, I'm out of breath. I, I should work out more. I actually went to the gym uh, recently. That was my first mistake, <clears throat> going to the gym. And uh, some of the old workouts don't really die. There's all these newfangled kind of approaches to working out, CrossFit, like treadmill, things like that. And how many of you have ever taken step aerobics? Okay. I say, why? I used to think step aerobics is like the easiest possible workout you could have, because all it is is a step, and you step up. But that's just not the case. I literally feel super uncoordinated now when you do step aerobics because the instructors, they understand it's not just about stepping up. It's like step up, step down, to the side, step up, do the twist, eat a muffin, do a dance, do it. right? And I'm like, I'm stepping up. I can't keep up with this. And I'm worn out because they're like, literally, they just kick your butt, especially if you're someone like me coming in. But, but life is hilarious, guys. The pain, the sorrow, like if you're really looking for it, you can find humor in just about everything. Would you guys agree? How many by show of hands would agree that for the most part, if you really look, life is pretty darn hilarious? Ugly, the uglier the better sometimes, right? <laughs> I love this picture. You've all heard it, right? There's benefits for laughing. There's benefits for finding humor. There's benefits, right? It reduces uh, uh, stress. It improves our ability to get sleep. It, um, you know, improves our immune system. And I just love this little kid. The kid is like an embodiment of just joy. And gelata gelatology is like the science of laughter. I just think that's a funny name. But that kid's like, ah, I'm so happy. And they look at the camel. The camel's just as happy. It's like, I don't know why I'm happy, but I am. The kid's so happy. Yeah. And there's true, and look at the bottom one. What does it say? It can literally save your life. Here's a couple examples. Dr. Norman Cousins. Um, he was diagnosed with, uh, I mean, he had heart disease and ankylosing spondylitis, and they didn't give him a lot of t a chance to live, or a lot of uh, opportunities. He said he wasn't going to live very long. But 36 years later, he's still alive. He created the anatomy of an illness. He actually went to the University of I think, California and studied biochemistry of human emotions. And he's just a perfect example. And this woman over here to my left and your right, Sarah Ann Rothberg, super impressive. She was actually diagnosed when her daughter was five years old. She was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, which is the highest of the stages, I believe, right? Which she was given less than five years to live. And um, the story really is, is that after she got her diagnosis, she went straight to Blockbuster when there was Blockbuster. <laughs> this is, dates this a little bit, but she went straight to Blockbuster and she bought all the stand up videos that she possibly can. Stand up tapes, I think is what she called it at the time. <laughs> she just bought them all. And she said, I cried and I cried. But when I stopped, I picked up Eddie Murphy's Delirious 
And then I just started laughing, creating a laughter therapy. But she's a super inspiration. She's got a foundation called Comedy Cures, and it's changed a lot of people's lives. Her idea for Comedy Cures came as a result of the pain that she went through. So there's a lot of opportunity. Notice the pain you have and embrace it. There's actually, if this isn't enough for you guys, there's actually an informal survey that I personally took. Um, I think you guys will find this, these stats pretty interesting. So if you're wondering what this means, is that I polled people and I said, literally, would you rather experience joy and laughter or cry all night? Most people pick joy and laughter. Would you rather experience joy and laughter or yell at a baby? Right? I mean, look at that. The, the, it's irrefutable stats. The study is not real, never happened, but it does make sense. But um, today really is about you guys. So with the time we have, I'm going to share with you, I would say, my five kind of approaches to find your story. Find the humor in your life. Where can you be looking for it? Opportunities for humor are everywhere. you just got to be looking for it. So it's kind of my five techniques that could be useful for you. Number one, love the location you're living. This is a picture of my dog, Elvis. He's the best. I've been excited to find out what Elvis looked like on the big screen because this is huge. On my little computer, I love him to death. He's, I never thought I'd love an animal more than I just love this guy. He's the best guy ever. And the reason why I have him up there, and these are his quotes, he told me them, I love food, affection, and sleep. I'm fully living in the moment as I pursue my loves, which are those three things. Elvis and our dogs, mostly dogs, cats are like, eh, whatever. You just got home from a trip? Feed me, right? But dogs, they're just so present. So I'm going to come home, and this is exactly what's going to happen. First thing, Elvis is going to freak out. And he's gonna run around me. He's like, oh, 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 Dad, you're the best. I love you. I love you. You're the best. We all have dogs like that. Is that right? <laughs> right? Then almost like on a dime, he's gonna go, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. He's gonna run to the food. He's gonna like, plunk. He's gonna run by the door, which is closed, where I kind of leave the food. He's gonna run his head into the door accidentally because he thinks that's where the food. And I have to go get the food. He's gonna run around my feet, and he's just gonna be fully, 100% focused. 100% present on getting food, right? Food, food, food. And then immediately after that, with, a, you know, with maybe about a five, ten minute window, he's going to go, and he's going to sleep, and preferably anywhere near my body. If I'm in the bathroom, he's going to walk, and he's going to sleep by my foot. But be present. Love the location that you're living you just got to. you got to be there. And then the funny stories just happen. If you're really present, be present in the pain that you have. Be present in the joy, right? And go, hmm, this is, this is going to be a good story. Something in here is good. It's a lesson I can share with my family or my kids. It doesn't have to be me sharing like this. It could be anything. Use it for your work. How's this story going to apply to what I do in my work? But there's opportunities for laughter ever. So love the location you're, in, you're living in, number one. Adopt an adventurous attitude. Um, this is a good friend of mine. His name's Barry Long. I went to high school with him. And uh, he's got a company called Talk and Roll. But at 22, he suffered a spinal cord injury as a, as a result of a motorcycle accident and lost the use of his lower extremities as far as movement's concerned. Um, but this is what he told me. He says, don't be afraid to take risks, have fun, and live your life to the fullest. He said the same thing. After I went through a kind of a bout of depression for a short period of time, he realized, I've just got to live my life. There's so many opportunities out there, and he's such an inspiration. I mean, and, and he's a perfect example. He just does everything. There's actually one of him bungee jumping. That the pixels were too, too wonky, so we got it off. But you know, I, I, I without being, what's your excuse? At times, what's our excuse? Sometimes, right? Very amazing man. Such an inspiration. And every time I see him, he's laughing. He's got two, you know, I think two, two great kids. He's just an amazing man because he adopts an adventurous attitude. And I would say this, right? You've got to be willing to say yes to the opportunities, right? And then you figure out how to make it happen. And I said this is a quote from me. <laughs> me. Yeah. Um, 
But every one of these activities up here were as a result of me saying yes. Actually, none of those really came as a result of me going, you know what I want to do? I want to scuba dive. I just saw someone doing it, and I'm like, wow, that'd be cool. And they're like, well, we're going we're gonna to scuba dive in some caves. You want to do it? And I said, yeah. And then what happens? I said, yes, my brain starts going, how am I going to make it happen? I got to get certified. I got to, I got to remove my fear of closed-in spaces. <laughs> or I just got to go. And that's a whole story in itself. When I got to the point where I was going to scuba dive here, literally, I, I panicked. I, this is the first time I've ever kind of completely froze and panicked. And um, a good friend of mine basically said, well, what do you normally do? You breathe in the regulator. Okay, so just practice doing that. All right, now just dip in the water. And immediately, after kind of doing that, after about six minutes of complete, sheer, utter terror, going, I don't think I could do this, I, I got under the water and things started getting clear. And then I looked at that little cave that seemed like this crevice that I was going to get cra you know, cramped in and my, I was going to explode my tank and I was going to drown, whatever. It was all these crazy thoughts that go in our head. When we say we want to do something, our brain goes, yeah, but, yeah, but, you probably can't because there's all these things. Once I looked at that, it was huge because I just took action. Just do things. Trip to Egypt. Uh, well, that's a great story. There's a lot of great stories here. <laughs> and most of these ones were, there was a lot of like pain involved in these ones for some reason. <laughs> there one I had diarrhea, which is an awesome story. <laughs> this one I just about vomited after the, after the free fall. This one I, it was the most difficult ever. Has anybody mountain climbed before? Like actually summited with crampons and the whole thing. Um, 14,000 feet, top of the mountain. It was the most physically uh, exhausting experience I ever had. But all of them started with me saying, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And then you'll figure out how to make it happen. Adopt an adventurous attitude. You know, when you leave today, write down, what are the three, four, three, four, five things I'd like to do? What are those things I want to do in my life, if you haven't already? Vision boards are a really good example if people do that. Get utterly uncomfortable. Be willing to get uncomfortable. And this is where I think this is really appropriate in the themed entertainment industry, right? You guys push the envelope. You, you kind of have to. If you stay within this kind of comfort zone, other people are gonna they're gonna over they're gonna pass you. Same thing in our life. If we stay in this kind of this is like a sinusoidal wave, you know, uh, you know, a little graph here. I'm not a math guy, so I did my best with this. But imagine that's your comfort zone, right? If we stay within our comfort zone. What happens as a result of staying there and not really kind of pushing herself, our comfort zone gets shorter and it gets smaller. So what we feel is comfortable becomes less and pretty soon we're just sitting in our, you know, in our house going, I don't want to step outside because it might rain on me. <laughs> but don't be afraid to just push yourself. Now, for example, if I would have, if I would have let the fact that skydiving, that's kind of an uncomfortable activity, right? But there's not a lot of opportunity when, when you're sitting on the edge of the, of the plane. I remember, I remember my skydiving. I thought I was the coolest. I thought my, I was calm and cool. And I did tandem. I didn't do it by myself. But I'm scooting up on the edge. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is no problem. I'm just going to cross my hand. I'm going to do this. Easy, right? The video tells a completely different story. It's, it's so funny because my hands are reaching Right? In my head, I'm going, this is no problem. I got it. But my hands are like, my body's like, this is uncomfortable. I don't. Right? And if I would have listened to that part of my body, then I wouldn't have, I would have missed one of the most amazing experiences. Has anybody skydived before? It's, it's amazing. Right? After your stomach, you know, kind of returns and you're, and you're, and you're free falling, the free fall was the most amazing part for me. Most amazing experience. And then when they pulled the chute, that's where I got really nauseous and the guy was spinning me around and it was difficult. But um, other than that, it was a great experience. <laughs> Utterly uncomfortable. Next, get great at gratitude. Whatever happens in your life, you need to adopt this gratitude, attitude of gratitude, right? Get really great at gratitude. Appreciate the things. Has anybody woken up? I mean, have you ever anybody woken up and that alarm goes off and you're like, ugh. Another day, right? I got to go to work, right? And then has anybody ever have been so excited about their day, right, that you wake up and you go, boo, it's going to be a great day. I'm alert, alive, friendly, cordial, firm, and enthusiastic. I'm ready to face this day with vim, vigor, and vivacity. It's going to be a great day. No, nobody? No. 
Yeah, good, Christine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, when you're really grateful, it's amazing what you find. When you find gratitude in the challenges, when you find there's something, there's a reason for everything that's happening in your job, your job, in order to kind of get through and navigate this world, uh, you know, with some sense of sanity and joy, is to really adopt this attitude of gratitude, get really great at gratitude. So this is actually from my first triathlon that I trained months and months for. Literally, I was so prepared for this. Um, I was terrified of the swim. I, in fact, the first time I'd swim, I, I got to the middle of the lake and I felt like I was going to drown, so I had this huge panic attack. But I didn't die because I'm here, um, and I made it. So I, I overtrained on the swim. Train, 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 train. So when the triathlon came, it's three, it's three events. There's the swim, the bike, and then the run portion. I was 10 minutes ahead on my swim projection. It's really great, right? I was 25 minutes ahead of my biking projections, right? And look at me, I'm all happy and really pale and super white. I don't really wear um, thing, little leotards like that very often. But um, about two miles left in the bike, this happened. Oh, <laughs> flipped over a board snapped my collarbone, and I literally plummeted. We were going about 25 miles an hour because the truck that was following me, they were going 25, that's how I knew. Hit this, hit this uh, you know, pine needle, needles on the road and then got back onto the cement part, and immediately my wheel started turning. You know if you're going about 20, 25 miles an hour and your wheel turns like this, what's probably going to happen? <laughs> right? I'm flying. My head and shoulders hit the ground, and then I remember one of the first things that happened. I said, ow, and I immediately had the thought, I'm really glad I have a helmet. And then right after that, boom, 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 boom. I basically skidded. My helmet split in two. My collarbone was basically pointing through, almost through my skin. And I looked at it, and then <laughs> I said, ow. And then almost immediately it popped kind of down. And then I really said, ow. And this is where how, getting great at gratitude can be really useful. This is a skill. It's a skill, right? Our initial response if we, are, we go unchecked is to look at the negative situation. So I had a choice. And I literally said, this is why. I've learned this since I was 20 years old, 19. What are three great things about this? That was after I said, ow, and was writhing in pain. Uh, I said, what are three great things about this? And, and lo and behold, the answers came. I said, well, I, I hate the, the run portion of the race anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't have to do that. <laughs> I said, this is, uh, it's not like me to, I, I, it's, it's like me to finish races. So I came back the next two years and finished the race with no, no injuries, which is great, right? I came back and I finished it. So I said, I get an opportunity to do this again. And then my last thought was, this is going to be a great story. And after I had that thought, I immediately looked for my brother as I was being carted, carted about a mile away from the truck. And I was in this truck, and there was three like teen girls and the mom in the truck. And they were all, because I was bleeding and I was scraped, and they are all like, ah, ooh, this is gross. And they were taking pictures, and they were actually laughing. I was like, thanks, you can laugh. And I was laughing because I knew this was going to be funny. But I looked for my brother. Immediately, I go, Roger! Because my knees were just mangled too. Roger, take a picture. <laughs> take a lot of pictures. This is going to be funny. Somehow, right? <laughs> and he took them, and I, I just love that one. Because I, on my Facebook, I had the agony of defeat. A year later, I wrote the thrill of victory. And I put them post and it was great. So get great at gratitude. Adopt that. What are three great things about this? So when you're heading home and, you know, your flight is delayed, what are three great things about this? When your kids do something to really upset you, what are three great things about this? When you're at work and it doesn't go the way you want, what are three great things about this? If you can find one thing that's great about it, right, I would imagine anything you could literally use, well, I'm still alive, so that's not too bad. Okay. But if you can find one good reason, you can find two. If you can find two, you can find three. If you can find three, you can find unlimited amount. And then you're on the path. Right? And I'm not saying, some of you probably are really good at this. It's just a good thing to be aware of. So get great at gratitude. Last one, have a helping heart. 
I use the phrase, I like the phrase, and I learned this from, I believe, Zig Ziglar, it's hard to be nervous when your mind's on service. And if I didn't learn it from him, I, I like him so much, I'm going to credit him. It's hard to be nervous when your mind's on service. When you think about others, right? This is when I was working in Egypt. I worked at an orphanage for a bit while I was traveling Egypt. It was an amazing experience. It was wonderful. Then the next day, I got super sick. And then I rode a camel, which is not a good combination when you have the runs and you're super sick across the desert. You figure out the story. Uh, that's a long one. <laughs> Kids in the game, they provide... They provide jerseys and uh, ability for poor kids, kids that can't afford to be involved in sports, right? Uh, Comedy Cures Foundation. Uh, the idea that my fiance, who's a naturopathic doctor, who uh, wants to create a mobile clinic on Fridays, go out and literally just offer free services to people. Have a heart for helping. It's amazing how many cool, great stories you get when you have this uh, heart for helping. Last thing I'd say is if you take all of those things to that, Love the location you're living, adopt an adventurous attitude, get utterly uncomfortable, get great at gratitude, and have a helping heart. It just means love, right? Wax on. Wax off. You, know, you guys are like, oh, I knew, I didn't know there was going to be laugh. Oh, he's good. I couldn't think of a, th a third you. So if anybody can come with a third you, help me out, because I, I, I really want to have the three, you know, because I like that. Um, so one of the questions that comes up is like, well, great, I want to laugh, right? And some people literally, they, they don't know what to do. How do I do? There's really three things, right? Three things that you can walk away with. Um, I call it filling your daily laugh quotient when you go out there in the day, when you're living your life, right? If you don't know when to find time, there's, there's time for laughter all the time, but if you're not, then schedule time for laughter. Literally, I'm going to go ahead and watch a comedy today, or I'm going to watch a funny YouTube video. I'm going to watch Kittens doing something silly. I don't care. But do something. You might have to put it in your schedule. So clients that I work with, I literally have to coach them. You need to watch your favorite comedy. That's your assignment. If you, and you're texting me when you're done watching it. Right? Some people, like they're so busy with life. Great time for my family growing up was dinner. When we set up dinner and all the four boys were there, my mom and dad, we, it was amazing. Laughter, it just ensued. It was raucous laughter. Lose your cool card. Lose your cool card. And some of you, some of you, do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say lose your cool card? Right? You're in the themed entertainment industry, for heaven's sake, right? Most of you don't have a cool card. <laughs> right? But when you do, be aware of it. Some of you, at some times, your cool card is massive, and you're pulling it out, and it goes, <laughs> right? You need to tear that thing up, and just get goofy sometimes. Right? right? I mean, I just love it. Someone just jumps up and just starts, and people are like, hey, in fact, you know what? Stand up. Let's do this. Get up and stand up. You guys are going to lose your cool card. I'm going to give you some music, right? And just lose you, whatever that means to you. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Sit on down. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> That was not planned, and thank you guys. That was awesome. <laughs> Spend time with funny people, and I mean fun, neat people. And you don't have to be a stand-up comedian. You guys are some of the funnest people already. Immediately, when I came here, I didn't know anything. I felt like, you know, I was going to kindergarten. I don't know anybody. Immediately, right? George and Judy are like, hi, how are you? I can be your friend, right? I'm like, thanks. Oh, you guys are great, right? And then Lisa and Fiona, they're like, hi, oh, come here, have lunch with us. We'll be your friend. I'm like, you guys are just amazing people. So I just appreciate you guys a lot. But spend time with funny people. So I guess we'll go back to this as I close. I'm just super, I, I've just been really honored to be here for you guys and be with you guys. Thank you for allowing me to learn a little bit more about what the themed entertainment world is about. And it looks like we got about three minutes left. So, um, This is really rare because normally I'm, I take it to the end. 
Come on, they're pushing the limits. And I got the, hey, you know what? Could we do the music? Let's just say, because we're done. Can we do the music? I just feel like I, I feel compelled to do something here. Oh my God. Okay. This is so great. I, I just want to, I have some people I want to thank. Um, I want to thank Angela, uh, the person who mic'd me. Uh, I want to play, thank Rose, he's right there calling me time right here. This is really great. Uh, uh, Brian and, and Joe, who, who helps with the screen and makes this thing look good, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Anje, uh, Joseph, uh, Shirley. Um, oh, and my friend Lauren for inviting me here in this, and to be with you crazy people. Thanks so much. You really love me. This is great. <laughs> yes. See you guys. Thanks.